so you see uh, in the last class we have discussed about casting right we started with casting we have seen uh, uh, what do we do in casting what are the basic steps right let me go through that through those slides so that you can have a quick revision right we saw what are the basic steps in casting right and what what is the what are the components right that we use uh, supporting components supporting elements we can call them like core and uh, the gating system right the cope and the drag top and bottom part of the uh, setup and as i said core is used for making internal features right wherever you want internal features or holes slots will press the score right and that line where you have this scope and drag meeting okay that's called the parting line as you have as you can see here it's called the parting line so and we even saw that video isn't it so now you see all these elements riser being one of the most uh, important ones and the total gating system you have sprue runner and gate right now you see any doubts from the previous class if not then we'll go with today's okay so you see the advantages of casting why do why should we go for casting right the advantages that casting process has to offer is that the product can be cast as one piece isn't it you don't have to make multiple components and then join it so the total component will be one piece right that's the thing that you get uh, so it can be cast as one piece because you see if even if we try to uh, make different components and then assemble them together right either through mechanical force or or through welding as we'll see as uh, in the second unit that you have welding right so we could weld it we could use an adhesive but the problem is what would, what would be the problem if we make multiple components and assemble them what are the problems that we'll face chance of rupture right so when those components are loaded right because they are designed for some application so when there will be loads right mechanical loads all types of loads thermal loads etc that those joints are at the weak points isn't it that's why you have a chance of rupture there as rightly pointed out by 137 uh, i mean rule number 137 so other thing is apart from being weak you will have too many components to handle isn't it so that in turn leads to this uh, delay in the production right all components have to come in at the right time for it to be assembled right so that is another problem and uh, you see the second one uh, very heavy and bulky parts can be manufactured right right from the not just very heavy you could start from very uh, what do you call of low weight from grams from very few few grams to tons right even 100 or 200 tons of castings are also being made so very heavy and bulky parts can be manufactured with the help of this casting process metals difficult to be shaped by other manufacturing processes may be cast right for example cast iron as the name suggests because it is uh, manufactured using this casting process the name has kept name in, name has been kept as cast iron so this cast iron is not uh, too feasible to be done with other processes okay that is why specifically the name just to keep it just to have a name of it it has been it has been kept as cast iron right all these uh, you might have seen the applications of cast iron in engine blocks right all those motor housings and uh, machine frames etc are made with cast iron so as i was saying machine components right the frame 
all those frames that you see uh, machine frames machine beds so those are very bulky parts isn't it so that and the fact that it cannot be done with other process other manufacturing process mass production is possible not with this sand molding kind of casting there are many others as i said you have investment casting we'll see this in the last part of your first unit right this unit you have investment casting you have shell mold casting right so all with all those things you have even die casting that is where mass production is quite possible we can say so mass production is also possible with this kind of uh, casting method that we have complex shapes can be manufactured so you see other alternative is you have to make a simple shape right and then you machine it or forge it right several processes has to be performed but when you, when it comes to casting if you are doing shell molding or die casting or investment casting or even this sand mold uh, casting very complex shapes can be manufactured right with uh, a lot of details we'll see i'll show you some examples hopefully that will make you understand what complex shapes uh, can we do with the help of casting because the metal can be poured in all those cavities and you have you can have this complex shape right otherwise you have to go for further machining etc if not for this casting i hope you have no doubts if you have any doubts you can put in put them in the chat box okay i'll frequently check the chat box you see it offers versatility versatility also how is it versatile complex geometry as i was mentioning internal cavities hollow sections even can be made right so alternative as i said you could either go for all other processes right forming machining and then all of that or you could go for a, a direct complex geometry uh, through the help of this casting process versatile versatility in the in the sense that you can do as small as grams right costings of size as small as in grams and as large as in tons as you can see economical as well there is little wastage isn't it extra metal is reused so that which the molded metal which is being poured it takes the shape uh, goes inside and uh, takes the shape of the mold cavity right so that in in the other processes for example you see machining right or uh, uh, machining for example so as i was explaining uh, in, we saw that in the video that you have to remove the material in machining subtractive manufacturing is what we call it so that material which is removed in the form of chips or uh, any other like for example in stamping you have coins being made and the other uh, let me show you in that sheet sheet uh, okay you have those coins being made right stamping process is what we call it stamping blanking so once that those uh, coins are removed this leftover material is wasted isn't it this all all this right counts as wastage even in machining as i was explaining when you are trying to machine it to let's say this dimension that tool this all this material will be removed by the tool right so that metal which is removed counts as wastage isn't it so there is little wastage here in casting as compared to machining or any other process okay that little wastage counts as what in the form of riser in the form of gating system right because the molten metal has to flow through let me show you that right the molten metal has to flow through all of these channels just to get to the mold cavity and then this riser so this all counts as waste isn't it you have to remove that our required component is this so this is our little waste is what we are talking there right the riser screw all these other things gating system and runners so that can be melted again so there is little wastage that's why we uh, it's economical isotropic because cast parts have same properties along all direction that's what you mean by isotropic isn't it you might have studied this in your uh, mechanics of solid subject 
that the property uh, if the properties are same in all directions x y z or any other direction you call it isotropic so cast parts we you can call them as isotropic the components that we get are isotropic unlike other like for example in uh, roll rolling right when it comes to forging right forming processes like forging or rolling all these you are trying to elongate the material and that would lead to change in the properties you see Un unlike casting here we have isotropic uh, uh, components being formed is that clear okay you see the disadvantages it's a labor intensive process why are we calling it labor intensive because there has to be a lot of preparation involved preparation of the sand preparation of the mold cope and drag right you have to fill uh, you have to place the pattern fill the sand right uh, remove the uh, pattern carefully and then pour in the metal you have to mold melt the metal firstly in the furnace right all these processes and then you have to pour it in the right time at the right speed right because if it solidifies in between the metal the molten metal will not flow all throughout the mold cavity right so all this is important and that's why that's what makes it more labor intensive there are a lot of steps to be performed and then after the casting is solidified right you have to wait until it solidifies and then you have to remove that either break the mold or take it out uh, carefully and then remove all those uh, wastage like in the form of gating system etc and then you have the cast part okay and another thing is not possible for high melting point as obvious right you have to melt the uh, material in casting that is a uh, basic thing so when it comes to high melting point metals it no, it's not possible because higher the melting point higher is the heat required right and that would lead to uh, what do you call more uh, power consumption so that is why we are saying that is not possible for high melting point metals it becomes very difficult dimensional accuracy surface finish and the amount of defects depends on the casting process so there are different processes as i said right investment die etc so all those it, it depends on the process the dimensional accuracy that you get the surface finish for example in sand mold casting the surface finish is not so good as compared to other casting methods okay and the amount of defects also depends on the casting process you see in sand mold type of casting it depends on the rate of uh, fluid flow right so defect that would arise also depends on this casting process allowances required as i said allowances basically you are trying to take into account some variable right external variables either it may shrink right the cast uh, casting when it is solidifying it may shrink so you have to take into account shrinkage allowance we'll see what are the different types of allowances but just to give you an idea of what it means allowances are required right distortion allowance there are many allowances that you have to take into account so all of these makes it complicated that's why it comes as comes off as a disadvantage okay now you see applications starting from transportation vehicles example engines okay machine tool structures as i was talking about turbine vanes are being made with casting especially this uh, with investment castings these blades and vanes are made with investment casting we'll see what is investment casting mill housing valves sanitary fittings also agricultural parts construction and atomic energy applications right all those this is quite relevant to you so you see uh, casting and forming are basically primary shape forming uh, processes okay so this is why you will see most of the uh, applications here most of the common uh, like be it aerospace or automotive or consumer appliances or heavy machinery you would see most of those here because it's a, a casting is a primary shaping uh, process right you have several other processes ahead but the first one comes off uh, as casting you see today castings are used in virtually all walks of life it, this this list is a partial list okay 
uh, and it is pointed out that the transport sector and the heavy, heavy equipment takes over 50% of castings that are produced. So of all, of all the castings produced, these two sectors, transportation sector and the heavy equipment sector, 50% of the castings are basically made for those of all the castings that are made. So they, up, they take up quite a huge uh, portion. In transport, you have automobile, aerospace, railways, and shipping, right? Heavy equipment, you have construction, farming and mining, machine tools, right? Machining, casting, plastic molding, forging, extrusion and forming, right? All these processes are there in plant machinery, defense, electrical machines, right? Motors, all those motor housings, generators, pumps and compressors as well. So they may be, uh, as I said, in machining, we have milling and planing, shaping, right? All those are required even after casting. For final dimension control, we'll take use of other machining methods, okay? But as I said, the first primary shaping is done using casting process. So all these municipal casting pipes, right? Those cast iron pipes that you see, right? Joints, valves, and fittings household appliances, art objects. These are also made using casting. All those intricate details, if they are required, then you will go for this investment casting, especially, or die casting. You see this engine block that is cast, okay? That's the direct product from casting. So all that machining, et cetera, will be required to achieve the final dimensions, right? You will keep a, a slightly, higher dimension, okay? Uh, I mean, the size would be kept more when it is cast because the post-processing that is required in the form of machining or grinding, right? To get the finish, material will be taken out. So you'll keep some more size, right? The casting would be made of a larger size, right? That is basically an allowance, you can say. But as I said, the primary shaping is done of, of this engine block is done using casting. And then crankshafts are also made. This is quite, uh, what do you call, a primary component in the engine, right? For uh, for the movement of any vehicle, right? Be it uh, aerospace or automotive or marine applications. So crankshafts are made with castings. You see, this is an Audi engine block. BMW cylinder head, right? That comes off uh, on top of this uh, piston assembly right brake assemblies as you're seeing here right this assembly is that clear the applications of casting okay now you see pattern because as i said if you want to have a mold cavity, you have to have a pattern, right? So we'll discuss the pattern, what is a pattern, what are the types, right? What are the properties required in a pattern? All those things. Pattern is a principal tool during the casting process, right? Without that, we cannot make the mold cavity. Pattern is a model or the replica of the object. You can call it either the model or the replica of the object to be casted. We're calling it replica and not the exact thing because as I said, the size would vary depending on the allowances you are keeping, right? So it's a replica, the shape would be same. Okay, it may be defined as a model or form around which sand is packed to give rise to a cavity known as mold cavity, in which when molten metal is poured, the result is a cast object, right? It's very simple. Do you keep the pattern, you keep, uh, uh, what do you call, pour the molding sand, ram it, right? And once it is done, you'll take out the pattern so that the inside cavity, right? The pattern will give the shape to that mold cavity. So that's your pattern. Very simple. Objectives, what are the objectives that a pattern has to fulfill? Uh, it prepares a mold cavity for the purpose of making, you see these, uh, uh, highlighted the important points with color uh, font, okay? So it becomes really easier for you to understand and what do you call, 
even for the for the exam point of view it will be easier for you to remember so it prepares the mold cavity for the purpose of making a casting right that's the basic uh, thing it possesses core prints also right as i was talking about you keep keep those core prints if you want to have internal features so it possesses core prints which produces seeds in form of extra recess for core placement in the molds you see in that example you see here even that uh, recess is made right just so that this pattern can be held in place okay that's what it means okay in the form of extra recess for core placement in the mold it establishes the parting line and parting surfaces in the mold right that's that is also another objective to establish the parting line we have discussed what is the parting line the meeting line of the cope and drag runner gates and riser may also form a part, part of the pattern okay depends on the case properly constructed pattern minimize overall cost of the casting right so there is a lot of uh, what do you call design uh, features involved so if there is a lot of design and considerations being kept then it will help to minimize the overall cost of the casting otherwise you have to make multiple processes right so if you want to achieve it in one go you have to go for a lot of uh, considerations right so that's why it is being said that if you properly constructed that pattern after careful consideration of all other factors like the solidification time and the core prints etc it will minimize the overall cost of the casting because if you are do doing it uh, with less in lesser time and and uh, what do you call with lesser material you will be able to minimize the cost right pattern may help in establishing locating pins on the mold and therefore on the casting with the purpose to check the casting dimension right so it also helps to locate the pins the locating pins which, which what we are keeping as i had shown you that day right just so that the scope and drag are aligned so that and a properly made pattern having finished and smooth surface reduce casting defects so you see the surface finish of the pattern decides the surface finish of that uh, sand around it isn't it because once the pattern is ramped i mean once the sand is ramped it will take the shape of the pattern so it depends on the pattern surface roughness also so if it is properly made Uh, with good finish and smooth surface then that also helps to reduce the casting defects otherwise the surface finish of the casting would be less okay it will not be what do you call what we are expecting it to be so that point is also there that the pattern has to have good finish for the casting to have good finish okay and other defects okay one what are the materials for pattern that we use okay and why we should go for so and so right for example wood right wood is also used as a pattern material reasons it is inexpensive isn't it we know wood is inexpensive it is easily available right depends on the geography also i mean the geographical location it is lightweight no doubt as compared to metals it is lightweight right easy to handle easy to shape also right carpentry etc good surface finish right we know it we can achieve good surface finish with the help of those uh, uh, sand uh, wood, uh, papers etc right uh, that they use to achieve a fine finish on the wooden surface right good surface finish poor wear resistance right the wear resistance is quite poor because uh, as opposed to metal which is quite hard wood is not so hard isn't it so abrasion etc uh, so that's why poor wear resistance absorb it absorbs moisture that is one of the major uh, limitation in using a wooden pattern that is it absorbs moisture so the moisture of the molding sand would be absorbed by this wood and what happens when it absorbs that 
it swells right the dimensions would change so that's a, a, a major limitation that we have so when there is moisture involved wooden pattern will give us a lot of problems less strength not suitable for machine molding okay the strength is less you see when we pour the sand and we want to ram it we can do it manually or we can use we can take the help of a machine right just so that it it is rammed properly right before removing the pattern so that machine molding cannot be done when we are using wooden pattern because it has got less strength it may break as opposed to metals which are strong wood has got less strength another thing is it is easily repaired warping weaker than metallic patterns all right so quite easy to repair because uh, metal as opposed to metals you require it to be machined right take into a machine and all those things and it is weaker than metallic patterns as we have discussed right examples of the materials that are used sesam kale deodor teak wood mahogany all these are materials used uh, i mean wooden materials okay no doubt so far okay okay so the next one is metal you see it has less wear and tear right as opposed to wooden one because it is hard it is not affected by moisture yeah right that is uh, another benefit metal is easier to shape as pattern with good precision surface finish and intricacy in shapes it withstands against corrosion handling for longer excellent strength to weight ratio okay all these are benefits easy to shape has good precision surface finish intricacy in shapes also and withstands against corrosion as opposed to your uh, uh, wooden one right where it absorbs moisture etc if you give good, good coatings for this metal metallic pattern then it can we can handle it for longer excellent strength to weight ratio right so that's another uh, factor that we see that it, it should have good strength but less weight right so that and uh, metallic patterns are higher cost they are higher weight and higher tendency of rusting so if those coatings are not there then uh, the corrosion is also another problem tendency of rusting other uh, disadvantages that the cost is higher and the weight is also more so it is preferred for production of castings in large quantities with same pattern okay so larger quantities and uh, with same pattern okay the, we we are using the same pattern in larger quantities right so that that's when it is preferred with one pattern you are going for a lot of castings the examples that uh, we can use as metallic pattern cast iron brass and bronze and aluminum alloys okay other things that are used are plastics okay plastics are also used as patterns plastics are getting more popular nowadays because patterns made of these materials are lighter no doubt as we know plastics are lighter they are stronger right moisture and wear resistance also right so all those uh, other two metallic and wooden they were having this problem of either moisture as a, uh, when it comes to wood and corrosion right rusting when it comes to metals 
but here in plastics we have not got that problem non sticky to molding sign this is another uh, good reason to choose the plastic because it will not stick to the molding sand as opposed to your metal and your wood when you are taking out the material the sand that is around that pattern would get disturbed right when it comes to wood and metal but plastics they are non sticky to molding sand and therefore we can remove it easily and another thing is they are durable also right can be used for long that's what it means right fragile why because they are less resistant to sudden loading and their section may need metal reinforcement because we know that plastics can be they are flexible right and therefore fragile so they need metal reinforcement right it may need depends on the what do you call geometry of the casting it may need metal reinforcement also that pattern may, may need metal reinforcement so that it can be uh, strengthened okay and sudden loading they are very uh, they are not too resistant to sudden loading because plastics are not too strong right so in that sense example phenolic resin foam plastics these are the materials will the heat of molten metal doesn't affect plastic now you see we are removing the pattern right once we have rammed the sand we'll remove the pattern and then fill the mold right is that clear right so you might have confused as to we are keeping the plastic and then pouring in the molded metal that's not the case right so once after removing the this is pattern okay which is made of plastic in this particular example what we are discussing <clears throat> sorry so you see so once after removing that pattern then we'll pour the molded metal okay just to give the shape to the mold cavity we are using the pattern right you keep that in mind okay now plaster okay this is also another um, pattern material advantages intricate shapes can be made it's it has got a good compressive strength okay expands while solidifying that is there and less dimensionally accurate so because you see the method that those are made right are not so reliable as compared to your metal metallic pattern or wooden pattern that's what and uh, wax this is another uh, what do you call uh, these are mostly used in